Thank you for joining Akash Healthcare Super Speciality Hospital's Facebook live chat session. We have with us today Dr. Saroj Kumar Yadav, Consultant Internal Medicine. We welcome you, sir. Thank Dr. You. Saroj has over seven years of experience in this field. He has expertise in hypertension, all infection disorders, thyroid disorders, acute and chronic diabetes, and geriatric medicine. Today, we will discuss, discuss typhoid fever, causes, symptoms, and its treatments. So, so my first question to you is, what is the main cause of typhoid fever and how can it be prevented? So, uh, typhoid fever is basically an infectious disease. It is caused by a bacteria uh, called Salmonella typhi. And uh, there are other variants of Salmonella also. This is the main causative organism of the disease. It is basically through the fake oral route, meaning to say from the water burn and food burn diseases. The transmission is through contaminated water and food, when it gets into the body, the uh, organism grows inside and then it causes the infections to happen. All right, sir. So, next question is what are the key differences between thyroid fever and common illness like flu? So, flus are basically a viral illness, they are caused by viruses, typhoid fevers are caused by bacteria. So, flu illness are usually uh, short lived. Uh, Duration of the fever is within a limited span of uh, three to four days, but type of fever can persist for a longer period of time. If not treated well, type of fever can lead to complications. Flu fevers usually last for four or five days and it goes up uh, slowly and it goes up immediately. It doesn't last for a longer period of time. And these are seasonal things also. Type of fever, on the other hand, these are not seasonal. Usually it happens when the contamination is in the higher side during the rainy seasons and other seasons also. But typhoid fever can remain throughout the year. Flus are used very seasonals. All right, sir. So what are the most effective antibiotics for typhoid fever? There are lots of antibiotics. It depends upon uh, different geographical regions. Typhoid fever are very common in the low socioeconomic status countries usually the Southeast Asia and the African continents. And based on the sensitivity pattern of different regions, the antibiotics are different. So there are areas where uh, fluoroquinolones, which were the main drug of choice in cases of typhoid have become resistant. This has had a resistant pattern in our country also. So it has been changing. As of now, for our setup, it is the septrazine group of drugs, the erythromycin group of drugs, which are found to be very sensitive. Most of the time, we look for blood cultures to find the sensitivity pattern, and based on the pattern only, we prescribe the medicines for the patients. Okay, so how can improving sanitation help reduce the spread of thi uh, typhoid virus? Okay, so what happens, uh, we know that uh, typhoid is completely to be transmitted via thick water, meaning to say contaminated food, contaminated water, this is how it comes to the body. So if you are able to maintain a good sanitation, food and hygiene practices, are, if you practice a good hand hygiene, and if you don't procure food from an unhygienic source, we are in a better set of affair to get prevented from this uh, disease illness. So maintaining good food, healthy food, practicing hand hygiene, and the source of liquid or water we take, that should also be well hygienic get prevented from these patients. Usually in the summers when it is widespread, where each and everything can be contaminated because of the seasonal changes. You have to take care of that. Okay, so, so ne my next question to you is, what are the potential complications of untreated typhoid virus? So uh, if the typhoid fever doesn't get treated in time, you must understand that typhoid fever is basically an enteric fever. Meaning to say it enters through the intestine comes in the body from that source only. So at the entry point, it can cause inflammations within the intestine. And if we don't treat the typhoid fever in time, the inflammations can go on and it can lead to chronic diarrhea. It can lead to abdominal pain, which can persist for a long period of time. Sometimes it can lead to perforation also. So these three are the usual major complications. If not treated in time, the bacteria can spread through the bloodstream to the brain. We have seen patients who are landing upon 
in comatose state because of the tachycardia also. It can affect the other organs. We have seen patients who can develop transaminitis. It goes and gets stuck in the gallbladder. So these are patients who can land up in cholecystitis. So all these complications can happen if the patient is not treated with antibiotics in time. Okay, so, so how, can, how can you differentiate between typhoid fever and dengue fever? I have already said that typhoid is a bacterial infection, dengue is a viral fever. The duration of dengue fever is usually short. It lasts for five to seven days. And the typhoid fever can persist for many, many weeks. If untreated, we have seen patients who land up after three months from the start of the fever and landing up on and getting diagnosed as typhoid fever. Also, the causative event is different. In dengue fever, it is usually the mosquito bite which carries the Andes virus and it causes the infections. In case of typhoid fever, it is the food contaminations. The treatment is again different. Usually, dengue fever subsides on its own, only a major conservative management, fluid replacement is required, and plaquette monitoring is required. On the other hand, typhoid fever doesn't go on itself. It has to be treated with antibiotics. So we have to take this typhoid fever up in a different way. One more thing to add upon, the dengue fever, the spikes of fever are high from the very first day. And in typhoid fever, the fever frequency gets up very slowly. The rise is very slowly and the fall is also very slowly. That is why the typhoid fever are called step ladder pattern fevers. Dengue fever, this a spike of fever it rises very high. It can remain persistent, but the good thing is it goes on its own in the next three to four days and no much of antibiotics is required in cases of dengue fever. Okay, so, so what are the common misconceptions about typhoid fever? So I have seen lots of patients who tell that once the typhoid fever is within your body, it doesn't go off. I have been detecting typhoid fever on and off. Every six months, if I go for a treatment for my fever, I have detected typhoid fever. And it doesn't go once it comes in the body. This is a very common misconception I have been saying in my clinical practice. So what happens? Fever is the presentation of any illness in the body. It can be viral, bacterial, or it can be because of inflammation that the body. So, and, and this is antibodies that we detect for the typhoid fever that gets formed and circulates in the body for a longer period of time, maybe for months. We have seen patients have more than six months or that. And every time we detect the fever, it remains the same antibodies which we detect on and off. And we confuse it with typhoid fever and we don't go for other possibilities of fever which the patient do develop. That is why it is very important to have blood cultures every time and not relying on simple tests to see whether it is typhoid fever or not. This is the first misconception I have always noticed in my clinical practice. And uh, I have seen patients that do feel that it will never go. No, vaccinations are there to help you out. To give the proper vaccinations in time, to maintain your hygiene, to take the antibiotic dose in a full dose for at least 14 days it is completely curable. Okay, so so what steps can be uh, can communities take to prevent outbreaks of typhoid fever? This is what is very important. Sanitation is one thing that every person has to look into: authentications, uh, contaminations of the food source and the water source. This has to be prevented. The Councillor, the municipality, it all has to play its own role in that. We can, at our level, maintain uh, hand hygiene. We can uh, look into good source of food, in time vaccinations. These are all going to prevent the outbreaks. And most of them in the summer season, where the water contaminations, because of many sources, are very common. That part has to be looked into. And if detected, finding the source, the uh, curing the source and removing it out is the one thing that has to be done. Otherwise, the spread of disease is so rampant. I have seen patients in the same family, one develops the fever, and other family members also do develop because of the transmissions from the same family members. So 
Timely treatment is also going to help us in, in cont containing the spread of the disease. This Perfect. is very important. All right, sir, that was my last question to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yadav, for sharing such a valuable piece of information. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you all.